Um, I wanted to uh, first of all acknowledge that we are presenting um, here uh, in the city of Hamilton, uh, which is situated upon the traditional territories of the Erie, Neutral, Huron, Wendat, Haudenosaunee, and Mississaugas. This land is covered by the Dish with One Spoon, Spoon Wampat Belt Covenant, which was an agreement between the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabek to share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. We further acknowledge that this land is covered by the is covered by the Between the Lakes Purchase of 1792 between the Crown and the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. Today, the city of Hamilton is home to many indigenous people from across Turtle Island, North America, and we recognize that we must do more to learn about the rich history of this land so that we can better understand our roles as residents, neighbors, partners, and caretakers. Acknowledging our indigenous partners is important as we value their knowledge of the land where this project is taking place. As we progress with this project, we look forward to continuing work with them. And now I'd like to go through some introductions. Um, my name is Margaret Fazio and I'm the project lead for uh, the Barton and 50 Road EA. Uh, I'm a senior project manager in the growth and infrastructure planning division of the planning and economic development department. And now I'm going to go um, uh, with, uh, um, first of all, welcome and welcome everyone. And first I would like, I wanted to acknowledge that uh, and welcome Councillor Pearson, Ward 10 Councillor uh, Maria Pearson, um, who is uh, in this meeting. And then also acknowledge that we have a, a a consultant team on board, uh, which will help with the presentation, will deliver the presentation. Uh, the wood team is made up of uh, Anika Shams. Anika, if you'd like to raise your hand or wave. <laughs> uh, next is Jeff Sujet. Suget, sorry. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Mohammed Khan. Hi, uh, this is Mohammed Khan from Wood. Thank you. And uh, John McGill. Thanks, Margaret. Good luck tonight. It should be Thank interesting. You. Thank you. Um, so, from the city staff pro um, project team, we have Monir Moni Ruzaman. Monir, if you can unmute and wave to everybody. Thank you. Nice background. Um, Mel Melanie Anderton, who's uh, here uh, to represent the sister project, which is uh, Highway 8 EA. Hi, Melanie. <laughs> Um, we have Gavin Norman, who actually was in another meeting until now, so I'm not sure if he's here, but he will join us later. He's our manager in infrastructure planning. We have uh, Stacy Krusikowski. Stacy, if you can wave, thank you. And also we have, uh, well, we're, we're going to have Ohi Izurain, um, and they're both from development uh, planning uh, in the planning division. And I now pass you on to Anika. Thanks, Margaret. Um, so as Margaret said, this is uh, the PIC for the Municipal Class Environmental Assessment for phases three and four of the Barton Street and 50 Road improvements. This will also include the CN Rail Crossing for phases one and two. Sorry to interrupt. You have to speak up or are closer to your mic. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, is that better? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so before we begin, we just have a few housekeeping rules to go over. Um, firstly, please remember to mute yourself during the presentation and while others are asking questions. If you do have a question, you may use the chat function to post your question, or you can virtually raise your hand and unmute yourself to ask a question. Um, if you could, please keep your questions brief. That way we can move along with the presentation and cover everyone's co comments and concerns. And we should, sorry, uh, wait, and we should um, deliver the presentation first before we can entertain comments, right? Yeah. Questions. So to go over what we will be discussing today, first we will go over the EA process and explain how we address the problems and opportunities. Then we will review the findings of our technical studies completed to date. From there, boxes four through six outline how we will present the valuation of alternatives for the design concepts, as well as cross sections for both Barton Street and 50 Road. And once all of this has been presented, we will then open up the floor to further discussion. 
Um, as a reminder, this project is occurring in the Stony Creek area of the city of Hamilton. The study is focused on Barton Street, starting from Fruitland Road and ending at 50 Road. Along 50 Road, it starts at Highway 8 and ends at South Service Road. The study area was determined based on the Fruitland Winona Secondary Plan, which predated the study and was the basis for the study. For an overview of the EA process, phases one and two of the process was completed through the Stony Creek Urban Boundary Expansion Transportation Master Plan. Phase one and two includes defining the problem and opportunity statement and determining the alternative solutions to address the problem and opportunity statement. One of the recommendations of the plan was to undertake a municipal class environmental assessment for Barton Street and 50 Road. And the, the study then officially began in 2016 with the public information update that occurred in September 2017. So since then, the project team has been working on technical studies to support the design and preparing design costs, concepts and cross sections, which we will be presenting today. Prior to this and the last public engagement session, we have consulted with Indigenous Nations, stakeholders such as the CN Rail, MTO and the focus group. And once the consultation period is over, we will move on to finalize the environmental study report with the intent to file for public review for 30 days in the fall of 2021. The city has developed a problem and opportunity statement based on the Fruitland Winona secondary plan, as well as the Stony Creek urban boundary expansion transportation master plan and to support the city of Hamilton's community vision, which is outlined at the bottom right hand corner of this page. The statement includes providing safe, comfortable, accessible and efficient pedestrian and cycling facilities, ensuring commuter and recreational transportation needs, improving connectivity, improving safety and reducing delays, creating an innovative landscape linear space, which is presented at the top right hand corner of the slide. This rendering at the top right hand corner is from the Fruitland Winona Urban Design Guidelines, and it proposes what the promenade um, will propose to be look like. Look like. And lastly, planning and reserving the right of way and the future implementation of local transit. During the first public information update in 2017, we received a lot of useful feedback from the public, Indigenous nations, stakeholders, and yourselves, which we have incorporated and considered in the subsequent phases of the project. The main comments that we have heard so far include flooding concerns, transport truck usage causing noise concerns, level of traffic, um, the land required for widening, intersection design, the need to bury hydro lines and phone lines, and the safety at the CNR crossing over 50 road, which we will go into more detail later on in this presentation. We have thus far completed a number of technical studies, and the first two that I will be discussing is the archaeology and the built and cultural heritage. The stage one archaeological assessment was completed, which found areas of archaeological potential um, within the study area, and the recommendation of the study included a stage two that will be completed during detailed design. For built and cultural heritage, a number of resources have been identified to have heritage interest or value, and as such, there are recommendations and mitigation measures that are suggested to be considered for detailed design and construction. We have also completed hydrogeology and geotechnical investigations. The hydrogeology work has revealed that there are several existing watercourse crossings in the area, including watercourse 5, 6, and 7. It should also be noted that 50 Creek is adjacent to 50 Road and Highway 8, and that has been considered in our design. There's also no groundwater discovered during field work or water resources expected during construction activities. And based on these findings, um, we have made recommendations that will be considered once again during detailed design and construction. For geotechnical, the findings include pavement conditions that range from fair to poor and that groundwater was not encountered in any boreholes. Again, there are recommendations suggested for consideration during detailed design and construction. We have also completed natural environment studies, specifically terrestrial and aquatic field work and impact assessments. For terrestrial, we found that there were three avian species at risk that were identified, three significant woodlot, woodlots, and no significant wildlife habitat was identified. And for aquatic, there are nine drainage features identified and four watercourses with intermittent flow and seasonal habitat to fish. 
Once again, based on these findings, there were a number of recommendations and mitigation measures that will be suggested for consideration during detailed design and construction. Now that we have reviewed the technical studies completed, we will move on to the evaluation of design and cross section alternatives. However, before we present the evaluation, we would like to go over the evaluation criteria that was used. This criteria is based on impacts to the natural, social, and cultural environment, as well as considers more technical and financial constraints. All of these have been defined in the municipal class environmental assessment guide. All of the alternatives that will be presented carried equivalent weight in all categories. The evaluation was based specifically on these following categories, financial planning policies, natural environment, social cultural environment, and engineering slash transportation. I will now pass it on to Jeff to go over the evaluation. Is mute. Yeah. yeah, Jeff, are you on mute? Oh, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, sorry, I'll start again. So, in terms of uh, Barton Street, we had a number of considerations that we looked at for the alternative alignment options overview. The urban Hamilton official plan notes that there is to be a 36 meter right of way along Barton Street with an additional four meter pedestrian promenade on the south side. However, current right of way widths through the study quarter vary between 20 meters and 36 meters, generally east to west. We do know that alternatives for widening of Barton Street are limited. So we wanted to make sure that we develop something that fit within the existing right of way limits. However, some additional land will be required to establish the ultimate right of way. We also did a sensitivity analysis where we looked at future traffic needs on Barton Street. Comparing Highway 8 to Barton Street, it was determined that there was justification for four lanes of traffic to um, be designed for Barton Street, in, and that was over top of um, Highway 8. Highway 8 will be four lanes for a section and then two lanes for the remaining section through Winona Village. So in terms of the widening alternatives, we initially looked at five. We're only going to present to you three. And the three alternatives that we're presenting represented the most viable options for the future alignment of Barton Street. And they're on the next slide. So in terms of alternatives, we have three alternatives that we are showing you here. And what we're trying to illustrate through the excerpt that you see here, and this is only a portion of Barton Street, Barton Street at the intersection of Fruitland Road, we're showing in solid lines, the existing right-of-way limits, the existing road center line as yellow and red, and we're showing you the proposed right-of-way limits and the proposed road center line as dashed lines. So starting on alternative one, in this alternative, what we did is we looked at simply widening to a 36.6 meter right-of-way from the existing center line, equally on both sides, and then adding the four meter promenade on the south side which would be on the right-hand side of the illustration. In alternative two, the same widening was occurring, but here we shifted to the north by four meters to give more room for the promenade on the south side. And finally, in alternative three, we widened to the 36.6 meters, but we are matching the northern boundary of already dedicated lands to provide a continuous even property limit on the north side of Barton Street. Next slide. So this shows you the three different alternatives that we looked at for natural environment, social cultural environment, financial engineering transportation and engineering other. What you see here is Orange means it was least preferred. Yellow means it was more preferred. And green means it's most preferred. And as you can already see, the preferred alternative 
is shown in a dashed red line, it's alternative three. This alternative scored the highest in terms of natural environment. Overall, it had the least impact on the natural environment. It also had overall the least impact on the social, social cultural environment in terms of the residential properties impacted, as well as businesses. It also shifts the road alignment away from residential properties, so it will result in a reduction in road noise. And we'll be adding a landscape buffer on the south side of the road in between the residential properties and the more industrial commercial area on the north side of Barton Street. Provides a consistent right away cross section with Barton Street west of Fritland Road with consistent property taking on the north side. It was more preferred in terms of the cost. It was slightly less than the other two options. In terms of engineering transportation, it provides a straight alignment with adequate site distance throughout the corridor and continu continuity with the cross section west of Fruitland Road. In terms of other considerations that apply to all options, we are recommending updates to four existing major culverts. The culverts will be designed to city standards with respect to flood risk. We'll be managing stormwater quality and quantity. And in terms of um, some innovative things that will be considered during the detailed design process, we are considering use of solar powered lights and active transportation facility materials, i.e. permeable pavements. Next slide. So in summary, why did we pick alternative three being right away widening to north but maintaining the property line? It maintains city of Hamilton safety standards, it reduces impacts on properties on both sides of the roadway. Overall, it has a minimal impact on the natural environment. And with that property taking being maintained, it utilizes previously dedicated properties north side and optimizes their property taking by maintaining a straight property line. And you will soon, uh, within the next day or so, have access to our role plan showing the property taking on our website. And we would encourage you to visit that website to view that um, role plan when it's available. Next slide. So we also looked at a number of different alternative alignments for 50 Road. Some things to consider here, the designator right away in the urban Hamilton official plan is 26 meters. It varies from 20 meters to 26 meters within the study area. You note the green area there is the green belt. The only portion of the study area, which is outside of the green belt is the, the white area that you can see at the top of the screen. That area falls within the urban boundary, but the rest of it is in the green belt. Something else to consider is 50 Creek, which passes just to the south and east of the intersection of Highway 8 and 50 Road. So that poses some design or poses some drainage challenges. Some other considerations that we were looking at in terms of 50 Road. Uh, a future consideration for a rapid transit line from Barton Street to a future transit hub that will be located southwest of the QE interchange. We also considered, of course, the urban boundary, the green belt designation, the CN rail crossing, as well as approved development southwest of CN crossing. We looked at a number of different cross sections, but we ended up going with a 26 meter south of Barton and a 30 meter north of Barton on 50 Road. Next slide. So we looked at a number of options for 50 Road. We ended up looking at these options because they were considered the most viable, similar to what you saw on Barton Street. The different lines represent either proposed or existing right-of-way limits. So solid is existing, dashed is proposed. What you see here in the three alignments, starting with alternative one is an excerpt of 50 Road, 
just north of Barton Street in alternative one, you see the right of way being widened evenly along the existing center line. In alternative two, we were trying to provide a hybrid approach where we were trying to avoid some areas that were um, uh, sensitive from an environment, environmental point of view. So in this, uh, this pane, alternative two, you see it curving to the east to avoid a species at risk habitat that is on the east side of the roadway. Alternative three, we looked at widening to the east from the center line, but we are matching up with the boundary on the west side. And so this also helped us to address stormwater management needs relating to 50 Creek. Next slide. This shows our evaluation of those three alternatives. As noted earlier, orange is least preferred, yellow is more preferred, green is most preferred. Preferred alternative was alternative three, shown in the dashed red line. Overall, although it does have some impacts in the natural environment, um, it was more preferred and so that was the that was the one that we wanted to carry forward in terms of social cultural environment it also was more preferred but in terms of financial it was the lowest cost and it was the most preferred so as a whole this option was considered the most preferred for 50 road the other points down below are the same as what was noted for Barton Street next slide So in terms of the preliminary preferred alignment, in summary, alternative three with the right of way widening to the east was selected as the preliminary preferred alignment. In terms of impacts and benefits with regard to this alternative, it avoids impacts to previously approved developmental applications, reduces impacts to residential properties, so to Barton Street, and it optimizes property acquisitions. And again, you are free to look at the role plan of this preferred alignment. It'll be available on the City of Hamilton's website in the next day or so. Next slide. We are also looking at a number of different options for the intersection of 50 Road and Highway 8, which is at the very end of our, our study area along 50 Road. What we are trying to do here is see if we could come up with some options that would reduce the skew at the intersection. However, minimizing some impacts to some culverts that are located um, on the south and east side of the intersection. What you see here is our three alternatives. Alternative one is shifting to the east. Alternative two is shifting four meters to the west. Alternative three is shifting four meters to the west and shifting to the south. Next slide. And so in terms of looking at the alternatives, alternative three, shifting four meters to the west and shifting to the south was our preferred alternative. However, we are in discussions with the city of Hamilton about this. We are showing in our role plans uh, the original alignment that we looked at. So this, uh, this is where we'll be looking for some further public input on, and we may end up um, going back to our original plan for this intersection. However, just to recap what we saw here in terms of our initial review of this intersection, in terms of the natural environment, there's a lower impact on wetlands compared to alternative one and two. Overall, it has a lower impact on property in terms of square footage. It has a mid to high cost due to the property impacts. We did manage to improve the skew up to 71.3 degrees for this option. And for this option, we would not need to extend the culvert that's located on the south leg of the intersection. Next slide. So in terms of this option, advantages of alternative three, Shifting four meters to the west and shifting to the south, where that improved.
Jeff, we, we lost you. you. Sorry, Jeff, can you repeat that again? We, we uh, you okay, stopped for a second, yeah. froze. Okay, um, so in terms of the summary of key impacts and benefits of alternative three, it improves the, improves the intersection skew angle and there's a no need to extend the existing culvert south of Highway 8 along 50 Road. Next slide. So we also looked at cross sections and we've gone through a separate evaluation for cross sections separately for Barton Street and 50 Road. These were shortlisted based on consultation with the city. We only carried forward three of them. Note that the drawings that we will share with you will show the preferred cross section. And as well, you can look at the cross sections that were not preferred that we also considered as well. In terms of the three alternatives for Barton Street, you see them on the screen. I won't go through all the details, but I will note, however, that there is an interim cross section and an ultimate cross section. The ultimate cross section builds on the interim and all three alternatives that we looked at. For 50 Road for alternative one and two, it's the same cross section north and south of Barton Street. For alternative three, we ended up proposing a separate cross section north of Barton Street compared to south of Barton Street. Next slide. This shows the evaluation of cross sections for Barton Street. What you see is alternative three is the preferred option. It meets city standards. It provides for a center turn lane in the interim and ultimate scenario. It also meets for cycling needs by providing a cycle or a multi-use pathway on the south side of the roadway and eventually a cycle track in the ultimate cross section. We do know that there is some um, neighborhoods and schools on the north side of Barton Street. Farther on, there will be consideration for some localized improvements to meet the needs of um, that area. Also provides for a significant width in terms of a linear green space on the south side of the road. There will be significant construction impacts in the interim stage, however, because we're simply building on what was built in the interim, the ultimate will have fairly minor construction impacts, just adding a cycle track on the south side. It was not the, not the least costly of the three, however, it was uh, quite close, and so it was considered more preferred. Next slide. This shows you the interim cross section for Barton Street. As you can see, we're widening to four lanes. Widening to four lanes, as this will be a major east west through fare, preferred route over Highway 8, as I mentioned earlier, will provide for future transit. Now, I'll also point out that the property taking will be a gradual process and will happen slowly over time. Consideration will be given to negotiating property takings during the development application process. Next slide. This shows the ultimate cross section. And so what you see here is we've now shifted that multi-use pathway over to become our promenade. And we've added a cycle track now on the south side of the road. The ultimate condition will dedicate space for a potential transit lane. The pedestrian promenade that you see there doesn't necessarily have to be where it's shown here in the cross section. It can meander. You can see we've also provided for a planting strip between the promenade and the properties that will be on the south side of the road. Next slide. This is our evaluation of 50 road, looking at the, the cross sections. 
what you see here is alternative three. And this is where we have a different cross section north of Barton Street versus south of Barton Street um, was the preferred alternative. So this provides for a center turn lane south of Barton Street into residential commercial properties. We'll be providing for a multi-use pathway on the west side of the roadway. As, as noted earlier, the, the area on the west side of the road will have a residential development. There's also a commercial plaza with a Costco that is on the north or on the south west corner of the intersection of the south service road and 50 road. So the multi-use pathway will be able to service people that are walking along the west side of 50 road between the residential development and the commercial area and will also provide for cyclists as well. On the east side of the road, we will be providing for a low impact development, a swale. In terms of the high level implementation cost, it was the least costly of the three options we looked at. Next slide. This shows the 50 road cross section north of Barton Street. We are providing for a 30 meter right of way. You can see the multi use pathway on the west side of the road with a ditch on the east side of the road, four lanes of traffic. In terms of benefits of this cross section, it incorporates active transportation facilities through the multi use path. The traffic impacts. So this shows 50 Road north of Barton Street, a 30 meter cross section. You'll note that we have a multi-use pathway on the west side of the road. We have a ditch on the east side of the road. So in terms of benefits of this cross section, as, as noted, there is active transportation facilities. The traffic impact study confirmed the need for the four lanes considers the existing truck route. It protects for Greenbelt land on the east side. It considers 50 Creek, which is, of course, runs south and west, south and east of the intersection of 50 Road and Highway 8. It also provides for future rapid transit and also provides for stormwater management features. So there's the swale or the ditch that you see on the east side of the road that will accommodate for road runoff and provides for a more rural look as the east side of 50 road will not be developed in this area next slide so 50 road south of barton street for here we're going with a cross section of 26 meters we're providing for a center turn lane so that residents and business owners can turn into their properties. We'll continue to have the active transportation facilities and we'll continue to have a swale on the east side of 50 Road. Next slide. So we also looked at the 50 Road grade crossing. There was a report that was done last fall, which looked at all the railway crossings in the city. And it also looked at issues at this crossing. One of the issues that was noted was the issue of queuing. When the signal is red at the South Service Road, vehicles queue back from the intersection and can queue across the tracks, particularly on the weekend. This is in part because of traffic going to the Costco that's located on the southwest corner of the South Service Road and 50 Road. So in the short term, the city has identified a number of improvements, warning signs to be placed at the crossing saying do not stop at tracks, applying a stop bar marking and, and a X symbol on both the north and south approach. They're also looking at they're investigating causal factors that would be contributing to the queue at the crossing and looking at possible measures to clear the queue. 
So we are looking at this study um, for a future improvement, and this will fulfill phase two of the requirements of the MCA process. And so we looked at three alternatives for this railway crossing, and they were to do nothing, to provide an underpass, and to provide an overpass. Next slide. So this is our evaluation. Again, as with the other options, the colors represent least preferred, more preferred, and most preferred. Sorry, and Jeff, so looking may, at the sorry. other. Hi, Jeff, sorry. If I may uh, just explain yes. that yes. Under, uh, underpass will be a tunnel or an overpass will be a bridge, just for folks who don't know what that terminology means. Those are the choices, right? So if okay. you're not crossing at grade, that means do nothing. That's at grade. That would, that's the technical term for leaving it in the same or, uh, vertical location. Underpass would be to go under the current rail and the overpass would be to go over it. So just to clarify that, thank you. Okay, thank you, Margaret. So in terms of alternative two, and that's the underpass, so 50 road would go under the tracks. It was the preferred option. It will have some impacts to the species at risk habitat. However, there'll be no visual impacts to nearby residents, so it will not be an eyesore. Um, it will, of course, improve traffic conditions because uh, traffic will travel free flow under the railway crossing. However, in terms of cost, um, there will be a significant capital cost. There will be a higher cost for stormwater management because there will have to be uh, measures in place to get rid of any stormwater accumulating at the bottom of uh, the underpass. However, it will have a low clearance requirement. There will be improved air quality and lower noise nuisance due to the reduction in app idling of vehicles at the railway crossing. And of course, the improvements will address transportation plans and policies. Next slide. So, why did we choose this as the preferred solution? The underpass option was preferred due to it having no visual impacts to nearby residents, also having a lower clearance requirement. So this fulfills phase one and two of the MCA process. The CA will allow for future right of way to accommodate a bridge or a tunnel if it is warranted in the future. There will be a separate EA done at some point in the future to further study this and confirm the findings of this EA. They will fulfill phases three and four of the MCA process. Next slide. So in terms of uh, next steps, we really uh, look forward to hearing from members of the public. What will we be doing over the next uh, period of time? Well, we'll be final finalizing our concept. As Jeff was saying, um, the next step will be to finalize the conceptual preferred design based on the feedback that we received today, as well as you know during our consultation with stakeholders, as well as the focus group, um, and all the impacts and mitigation measures will be fully documented. And from there, we will prepare the environmental study report, and this will be presented to council for approval. Um, a copy of the environmental study report will be um, presented to the provincial agencies, such as the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks for their 30 day review. Um, and finally, we will file the ESR for review and comment during a 30 day review period. And at this point, anyone, um, any member of the public is able to comment and oppose the report if, if they would like to, and uh, on the basis of impacts to indigenous and treaty rights, and an appeal could be made to the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks under the EA Act. Once all of that is complete, um, the project will proceed to detailed design, which is scheduled to begin in 2025. The detailed design for schedule for 50 road is still pending at this point, and the property acquisitions will be finalized at this stage for implementation with construction to follow afterwards. Thanks, Anika. So at this point, um, I just wanted to add that the comment deadline is July 23rd, 2021. Um, and right now we can just open it up to any other feedback, um, any comments or concerns you might have. 
Uh, Margaret, do you need to unmute? Um, yeah, so I first I wanted to acknowledge that uh, uh, some folks have been um, have been posting questions on the Q and A. So I will read out some questions, and we'll answer them as we can. Um, so this is the time where if you wish to raise your hand, please do so. Uh, there are there are options for that that were explained at the beginning, but I don't know if we maybe not everyone was on the call at that time. If you'd want to maybe go back to that slide, Anika, and explain how folks can do that again. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, on the on the we do have some Q and A already in the queue. So if you see the signs here for chat, raise hand. Um, that's where we are. Okay. Thank you. 